so welcome back friends um, and this is the third part in this series and in this uh, video we will be uh, looking into the team section as well as uh, the services and the contact section so let's move ahead and for the team section i will be uh, pasting four photos here uh, that we will be using in this uh, team section uh, i will give the resources in the description of this video uh, also we will be using a hover effect and for this hover effect we will be using image hover dot io uh, this is a beautiful css fx collection so you just need to download this and unzip and use this uh, image hover dot min dot cs file css file uh, you just need to copy and paste it in your project folder and include it in your html file you will get the documentation here uh, let's first paste uh, this link in the html now we have included the link uh, here you will find all the various effects uh, you can use whichever effect you like uh, we will be using this one for this project uh, it's a flip dial uh, diagonal uh, there are other various effects also uh, you will find the documentation about how to use it in this section uh, so for the purpose of this video we will just copy this html code and paste it in the team section uh, before that in the team section we will include a parent uh, division with the class name of gallery and then paste it inside it uh, we have uh, eight images uh, sorry uh, we have yeah we have eight images in all so we will be uh, copy and, pa and pasting this several times now this is the one which is used to change the background color of these blocks uh, you have other things uh, in this also the effect which you like you can just copy this uh, text here and paste it in here uh, it's the class name actually so you can just copy the class from there and paste it here to get the desired effect now i will just copy this entire block over and over again before that i will just name this um, jenny joe and uh, give some text here uh, so we can copy this block including the text and the headline heading so i will just paste it seven times so that we get eight such blocks we will uh, just rename the images and i will also change the names of uh, uh, so that it looks good actually uh, it doesn't matter for this design because the purpose of this video is just to uh, show you how to create a responsive website without using media query uh, in fact there is no harm in using media query let me clarify that uh, uh, it uh, for a big uh, web page or a website uh, uh, it would reduce the number of uh, CSS lines but it doesn't matter even if you use media query as such uh, so let's first check it in the browser and check where we are now here you can see that we have included these uh, images and we already have the hover effect here but we need to style uh, these classes for example we didn't uh, style the figure tag here uh, as well as so let's go ahead and style some CSS so we need to style these tags so we will use the same principle which we used for the about section to make this responsive uh, we will define a parent uh, container uh, this is actually 
the width for the entire block that is the gal gallery block uh, I will be using margin 0 auto to center it and then I am using display flex as well as flex wrap wrap now this is the technique uh, to make it wrap to the next row so this is the secret behind how to make a responsive website without using media query here for the child element that is figure I am using a fixed width uh, 320 pixels uh, that will fit well in a mobile device so obviously it will be multiples of 320 pixels for a tablet or a desktop device I will give some margin here and use flex as auto so that it adjusts properly to the screen size and use a border style of solid as well as uh, border color I will just show you what will happen if I don't use a border so for example now let's uh, check it out in the browser uh, I think something has gone wrong here actually uh, so, oh sorry I mentioned it as a class uh, it's a tag actually so let me refresh it now you can see that there is no border there is no spacing between these uh, photos or images so to place some uh, padding in between them uh, the easiest way is to define a border so let's go ahead and define a color and a border size width of uh, say um, 10 pixels so now here you can see that we have borders for the uh, images uh, vertically but uh, we also need to uh, place some padding horizontally but before we do that I will just include this classes for the background color and here we can also mention uh, this is the uh, background color of that text block inside the image so I will just mention a margin bottom of 20 pixels so that there is a margin between uh, all uh, the, these images and for the caption uh, h4 that is, that is the name of the team member we will use some styles here padding bottom of 10 pixels uh, you can always uh, use a combination of uh, units for font sizes and all that it doesn't matter actually uh, but it's um, preferable that you keep it uh, uh, consistent across the uh, CSS uh, now here I will just change the font size and this is the cursive um, text which appears just below the team members name this is the description of that uh, team member so uh, I will just copy paste this uh, background color for the fig caption So this is uh, the class we defined for the hover effect. So now let's refresh and check this one out. So here you can see that um, it's perfect now. So we have completed the team section uh, for just uh, reducing the brightness of the font uh, for the cursive uh, letters. Uh, now you can see that it's looking fine so it is it's a pretty long video actually long tutorial uh, now uh, so it's uh, it might get it might be getting some bored so i think uh, we should uh, move ahead and complete this uh, tutorial fast because uh, it's a bit a bit kind of boring for me also because uh, 
we have already completed two sections and uh, it's getting a uh, kind of a repeated kind of a thing because you have already understood the concept i guess um, but uh, even though i will just go ahead and complete this so let's move ahead uh, and create a parent class here as well as child uh, divisions for in the services section i have used the parent uh, division as box with a class name of box holder and for the child uh, i have used the class name of boxes and inside this we will be placing six services so i will just copy and paste this and change the services uh, title name so here i will just change the heading names so here we will uh, just style the parent class first so i will just give a maximum width of say uh, 1280 pixels and use margin 0 auto to center it and for the child element i will use boxes inside boxes i will use back, uh, background color i will again use rgba and for black color i will use a transparency of 0.2 and uh, i will give a margin of uh, 30 pixels at the bottom now if you check in the browser uh, it's a full width block because we didn't specify any width for this boxes now i just wanted to show you how this responsive uh, design works uh, here uh, using flex so that's why i didn't code the display flex part now see what happens when i include the display flex here in the parent uh parent class so here i will include display flex as well as display uh, flex wrap of wrap and justify content of space around and for the child we will be um, giving some width fixed width of 360 pixels and a height of say uh, 200 pixels now before i show you i will just remove this uh, justify content part so that you can understand what happens if i don't include that now this is how it has divided into three parts correctly but there is no space in between them so that's why i have used here justify content space around now if you check in the browser it will be centered horizontally as well as vertically and well aligned uh, and it has space all around we just need to style the text and the title so let's go ahead and style the title as well as the for the boxes h4 we'll just uh, copy and paste it the uh, for the the font is a different one so i will just change the font we'll give a padding of 20 pixels and for the paragraph tag that is the content just below it uh i will change this to open sans and change the font size to say 17 pixels or maybe 18 and for padding i will give a uh, left and right padding only so let's check it in the browser so it's perfect so this is how uh, things work um, so if you now uh, just uh, resize the browser you will notice that uh, it's a responsive uh, block 
I will just use this uh, font smoothing feature so that it doesn't look that bright in the text. So here you can see that it's responsive in and it gets adjusted to all the screen sizes. This is for the mobile tablet and desktop version. So we have completed this uh, services section. So the only section which has remained is the contact section. And for that section, it's pretty easy because uh, I am just including only a map there. Uh, it's a Google uh, map embed code. Uh, before I do that, I will just uh, include a class named map holder. And inside this division, we will create another division named map responsive now this i i am doing because uh, if you um, if you are aware with uh, copy and pasting the embed code you will always notice that it's not responsive uh, if you directly paste the iframe code so what you have to do is you have to create two uh, divisions uh, one a parent class and a child class and then uh, here in the parent class you have to define a width of 100% and for the child class that is map responsive you can use overflow uh, hidden and uh, padding of uh, say 50 you can use any um, padding actually uh, it depends on how much uh, um, area you want to give uh, space at the bottom so that's how this works uh, you will understand it once you um, practice with this layout and for the iframe you just give a value of left zero and top zero and a height of say uh, 100 percent and a width of 100 percent then you can also define a position absolute for this iframe uh, this is how you can include a responsive uh, google map embed code now if you stretch the window you will notice that it stretches now only a few things are remaining like uh, we need to uh, place a button here on the uh, bottom right corner so that we can scroll to the top from each of these sections because we don't have an option here right now because we can go to each of these sections by clicking this button but uh, we still need an option to uh, go back to the top of the section so we can do this using jquery uh, so uh, first of all let's go and uh, you can just paste this you can just uh, i will just uh, give this code actually i don't want to code this from uh, line by line so I have just uh, pasted this uh, scroll to top uh, code here. So you can just, uh, I will provide the code in the description of this section. So you just need to include this JS file. Scroll to top dot JS. Uh, I think uh, it's case sensitive I think uh, I don't I'm not sure uh, but uh, why to take chance let's uh, use the same thing here now here you can include a icon for scrolling to the top I, I will use a class name of scroll to top and uh, let's go to font awesome and get a icon to be placed here actually a font so let's search for angle and we will take this angle double up we'll just copy this html code and paste it right here now let's go to our css file I will just comment scroll to top CSS. Scroll
equal to top class we'll use a padding of uh, 10 pixels font weight of say uh, bold you can give a color um, according to the background which uh, uh, which is in contrast with all the sections uh, i will use a position fixed and give a bottom and right of 10 so that it's placed on the bottom right corner you can change these values according to your needs and i will use display none so that it doesn't display by default and it displays only uh, when one scrolls down so for the hover i will just include text decoration none because by default it includes an underline so for the padding I think I misspelled the padding there but let's check in the browser here you can see on the bottom right corner the icon is showing but it's uh, too small so you can just use a class name which is available in font awesome to increase the size you can just include fa 3x now that will increase the size of this icon by three times now if you just uh, refresh it will show that uh, the icon size is good enough now so uh, it on clicking the icon it's uh, moving to the top of the website now the web page this is what we required so uh, we have completed this uh, series here in this video hope you like this video and uh, i hope you like the entire series because uh, this is a kind of a modern kind of a layout and um, this is used uh, primarily by every uh, template creator nowadays because uh, every design nowadays is uh, works on these principles of responsiveness and mobile first approach uh, for the icons here i will just use cursor pointer so that when i move the cursor on these icons it will show this hand instead of the pointer so that's how in css we have to use pointer to show the hand it's quite confusing for beginners but that's how css works uh, hope you like this video please do subscribe to uh, my channel and uh, remember to press the bell icon so that you get all uh, the updates about my future videos and do hit a like for this video too uh, and i hope you have done the same for my rest of the videos in this series thanks a lot